we're going to continue working with polynomials and learn a little bit more about the roots of polynomials, real roots, rational roots, complex roots. Let's continue with this one right here. It says true or false? If false, give a reason. The polynomial p has three real zeros. Well, p of x equals x cubed plus x. You know, it's possible that something like that would have three zeros. So p of x equals x cubed plus x. In fact, there's a theorem. There's a theorem on your handout that says, you know, whatever the degree is, you're going to have that many roots. And remember, roots is synonymous with zeros. So that's your n zeros theorem. Let me pull it up up here. Uh, let's see. I think it's this one. Yeah. Now, a lot of these things we've used already. Some of these things we won't use. Others uh, just don't get used at all anymore, really, I don't think. At least not by me. We know the correspondence between roots and factors. If something is a root, then x minus c would be a factor or vice versa. We have used that. But here's the theorem I was referring to. Every polynomial of degree n can be expressed as a product of n linear factors, essentially meaning the polynomial has n different roots or zeros. Not necessarily distinct, meaning they could be repeated. That's okay. But where we're going to go here is we're just going to actually look at the graph of our polynomial and try and decide, well, how many real roots does it have? Hmm. Well, real roots are where it's going to cross the x-axis, and this only crosses the x-axis at one place. But the theorem I showed you just told us how many roots have to be here. It has to be three roots, right? So two of them are missing. And let's see if we can't figure out what's happening to those missing roots here. So let me start by factoring out the x, and that is behind x squared plus 1. Now, if I factor that out and then set this equal to 0, I can start figuring out where these roots are. So here and here. x equals 0, we already knew that. We could see that off the graph. Or the other possibility is that x squared plus 1 could equal 0. And that raises an interesting possibility, one that until worked by guys like name, uh, with the name of Cardano, um, I'm trying to think, Pataglia? Oh, there's a couple other ones there that did some early work in this, laid the groundwork, but for the longest time, mathematicians couldn't solve stuff like this. They thought it was ridiculous. It was imaginary. The name stuck, and we have imaginary roots, but they're a real part of our real world. So the reason we only saw one real root is because it has two imaginary, or better yet, complex roots. And that would be x equals i, or x equals negative i. Now together with x equals zero, we can write this polynomial fully factored. p of x is gonna be x, corresponding to root of zero, and then x minus i, corresponding to this one. What would be the last one, do you think? x plus i x plus i. And that's fully factored. You can read off the roots and you can also see that two of them are complex. So that's why the graph only crossed the x-axis once in terms of what we can see anyways because the other two spots that it crossed the x-axis were in your imagination. Hey. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. So would it be true or false? Um, so you see, is it false? True or false? Just give a reason. The polynomial has exactly three real zeros. That'd be false. Because it had one real zero and two complex zeros, or two imaginary zeros. All right? Uh, the polynomial can be factored into linear factors with real coefficients. So that's another true and false part of the same problem. These aren't real coefficients. So the answer would be false. Those aren't real numbers. Okay, let's keep going. P of x is x to the fourth plus 9x squared. This is example b. P of x equals 
x to the fourth plus 9x squared. Well, one thing you should probably get used to is factoring out the GCF right away. If there's a factor of x or x squared or whatever, factor that out. And you get x squared times x squared plus 9. Okay. And so now you need to figure out how this factor is or what are its roots. Kind of like the last one. We know where this is 0. x squared equals 0 means x equals 0. Now it has multiplicity 2. That's okay. The other possibility is x squared plus 9 equals 0, meaning x squared equals negative 9. What's our possibilities for x? And the square root of negative 9 is plus or minus 3i. Now, a little thing to be careful of, if you're inputting, if it asks you to list the roots for WebAssign, then the roots would be 0, 0, 3i, and negative 3i. That's how you'd have to list them. If it's asking you to write it as a product of linear factors, then you can write it as x times x, which is your x squared, x minus 3i, and x plus 3i. Now you're probably going to run into x squared plus a number often enough that I can show you a little bit of a shortcut to this if you want it. So that shortcut would look kind of like this. If you have um, x squared plus uh, a squared, that's going to factor into x plus ai times x minus ai. So, so your two solutions would be plus or minus a times i. So, If you can make use of it, great. If not, there's nothing really wrong with what you've got going over here. All right. Nice. Let's keep rolling. <sighs> Polynomial is given. Find all the real, real and complex repet uh, Find all the zeros of p real and complex, including repetitions. Factor completely. All right. This is a good one, and it's going to illustrate a little bit of work that you're going to have to do with factoring some of these. And I'll give you kind of a hint on the one that follows this one, something that you're going to see in your homework. Let me start by copying this down. So this is example C. So it's going to be P of X equals X to the third minus 4X squared plus 20X. Hmm. squared plus 20x. I kind of like the last couple. You're going to start by factoring out the GCF. x times x squared minus 4x plus 20. That's our p of x. If I set that equal to 0, I've got something times something else equals 0. So we could have x equals 0, which I think is how many Olympic gold medals we had yesterday, which is a bummer. And then this could equal 0, x squared minus 4x plus 20. And to my best guess, that does not factor. So, yeah, shake of the head there. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, sing that to pop goes the weasel. It's a good mnemonic. You won't forget it. For us in this particular case, that's going to give me a equals 1, b equals negative 4, c equals 20. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm of the habit of writing this with empty parentheses especially in a case like this where you've got a negative value for b. 
it's just altogether too easy to make a mistake with that double negative. So it'd be the negative of negative 4 plus or minus negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 20 over 2 times 1. Ah, <sighs> sigh, 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 sigh. Let's keep going. The double negative becomes a 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 80. I don't know, how about 16 minus 80? My bad. Actually, it'd be a positive 16, right? Because when you square that, the negative is included, so you get a positive 16 minus 80 over 2. And something interesting always happens, or not always, but it happens quite often when students do this. Can you see what happens that shouldn't be happening? Yeah, a little wishful thinking. He's like, oh, that negative would be really inconvenient. <laughs> but I'm sorry, it's still there. Whether it's inconvenient or not, now that does become 4 plus or minus 8i over 2. And the fact that you got a negative there is why we weren't able to factor it. It doesn't have any real roots. Now, last but not least, um, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to factor out the 2 from the numerator and leave behind 2 plus or minus 4i. I could have factored out a 4, but I'm only going to get cancellation with the 2. So those 2s cancel and I get 2 plus or minus 4i. So those are my roots. Correct. You can't cancel the 4 and the 2 here. The reason is this whole thing is kind of regarded as one term. You can't cancel into that binomial. So what I used to say to some of my classes is that when you have things that are added or subtracted, it's like putting a parenthesis around it. Those terms are married. And if you break up a marriage, I'm going to write homewrecker all over your test. All right, it's bad. Don't do that. So, yeah, you know, LOL. Um, yeah, the bottom line, you can't do that way. You can, if you want to, you can do it an alternative way. And this is the way I mentioned a little while ago. You can divide both of those terms in the numerator by 2, and that gives me 2 plus or minus 4i, which is the same as I got this way. There's just some healthy habits here that I like. You know, I'm not going to mark you down if you do one way or the other. You don't have to do it my way. But we do have to finish this one up. Let's take a look where we're at. We've got a root at, at x equals 0, a root at x equal 2 plus 4i, and x equal to minus 4i. Now all along when I've been playing this game of factoring things, all that I'm doing is I'm moving these terms to the other side to get 0 on one side. Now the binomial that corresponds to x equals 0 is just x. But here when I move things to the other side, I get x minus 2 minus 4i equals 0. I want to try it on this one, x minus 2 plus 4i equals 0. That's still a binomial Yeah, because this is really one number. Oh. It's, it's a complex number. In fact, you could write it as x minus 2 plus 4i equals 0, and then x minus 2 minus 4i. So that's kind of keeping it factored there. But in putting the parentheses around it, I'm really highlighting the fact that that's really one number. And this is a binomial factor, and that's a binomial factor. So all together, 
our polynomial way back here. Remember this way back here about 10 minutes ago? P of x is going to be x times x minus 2 plus 4i. I'm using this one. And then x minus 2 minus 4i. So there it is as a product of linear factors. <clears throat> Hmm. Nice. Kind of a long one, but I hope you followed along. The idea was that after you factor this, you solve this with a quadratic formula. We got two complex solutions. That's okay. We treat it just as if we would have treated something like x equal negative 2. You move that to the side, you get x plus 2. Move that to the side, you get x plus 1. You're getting zero on the other side, but what's left is the binomial factor on the left-hand side. So you're just moving these numbers over to the left. Okay, anything else on that one? Mm -hmm. This one is one of your homework problems, and I'm going to kind of give you a hint on this one. So call this example, yeah, let's see, I don't do I call it example D? Hint? Yeah, okay. Example D hint. <clears throat> so we've got P of X equals X to the 6 minus 7X cubed minus 8. And they didn't give you this stuff down here. I did. That's me. You can thank me on that one. All right. Well, let me sh let me show you what's going on here. If you look at this, it kind of follows the pattern of u squared minus seven u minus eight. And I know how this factors. This you might remember. This kind of stuff is quadratic in form. If I write it like this, that oh, that's u minus eight times u plus one. All right, and that works great here because it's a quadratic. But over here, I'm looking back at things, I can see, oh, well, u is really x cubed. It's my middle term. And this is my x squared term. But if I square x cubed, I get x to the sixth. And what it's saying is that, you know what, I can use this idea to factor this. That's going to factor as a u, which was x cubed, minus 8, and a u again, which is x cubed, plus 1. So, okay, that's a nice start to this problem. Now, I'd love to tell you that it finishes nice. It doesn't. It gets ugly. That's because each of these is the sum of cubes. And each of these will factor. Now, let me give you a little reminder. Over here, a cubed plus b cubed factors into a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. I kind of ran out of room there. I apologize. a minus b, a squared plus ab, plus b squared. And I ran out of room again. My bad. When you do these factorizations, it's always a binomial times a trinomial. And as another reminder here, the signs involved follow, follow the following pattern. These first two signs are always the same as this for your binomial. Plus and a plus, minus and minus. The second two, minus and plus, plus and minus. They're always opposite. And the last one is always positive. So, so a little acronym for you. Now let's see if I can't use that to factor this first one. It's going to factor as, well, let's see. What do I cube to get that? X. What do I cube to get 8? 2. 
all right? And now my trick is always to use these two to help generate these three. So I'll take the first one and multiply it by itself, x times x. The difference of cubes, difference of cubes. So I, I didn't put that, I didn't put in the signs yet because I don't want them in yet. I'm going to go back with that acronym and fill them in. Um, the last term is going to be this term by itself, 2 times 2, that's 4. And the middle term is going to be this times this. So I multiply the first by itself, the last by itself, and now I'm going to multiply the two together, x times 2. So yeah, I think maybe this is your kind of part of your question. I haven't put in any signs yet. And that's because I wanted to practice this idea. Same sign, op sign, always positive. So what's going to go here? A minus. Opposite sign, plus. Always positive. You have to do the same thing with this one. It's going to be an x plus 1, x squared minus x plus 1. Wow, you've got a lot of work ahead of you. You should be able to tell me two of the solutions. If I was to set this equal to 0 and solve, or this equal to 0 and solve, two of the solutions should be pretty clear here. Prove me right. Prove me that you can tell me what the solutions are that correspond to x minus 2 and x plus 1. x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. There's two of your solutions. You're going to get two more from where x squared plus 2x plus 4 equals 0. And let's see what that is. That's a big, wonderful mess. That's going to be x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of... 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 over 2 times 1. 1, 2, and 4 are A, B, and C respectively. Um, mm -hmm. That's going to be 4 minus 16 is the square root of negative 12 over 2. And man, things are just no end of fun here, right? Um, I'm going to split up that negative 12 into three parts. The first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of the negative. I'm going to put that in its own square root there in the middle. Now, let's concentrate on 12. Is there a perfect square that goes into 12 evenly? Yes. So by perfect square, I mean numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25. Yeah, 4 goes in there three times. Now, I put the negative 1 in the middle because when you put it at the end, a lot of times people accidentally shove it underneath this radical. So it's just safer here. So it gives me negative 2 plus or minus square root of 4 is 2. Square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 3. If you factor out the 2 from the numerator, it's going to be behind negative 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3 over 2. And whoo, those cancel. So you're left with x equals negative 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3. Whew. And I also have x equal 2 and x equal negative 1. You're going to have to go back and get the remaining two solutions for this, this polynomial. When it asks you for all of this factored, Let's rewrite this as 
x equals negative 1 plus i times the square root of 3, and x equals negative 1 minus i times the square root of 3. You're going to have to write these as linear factors. So I kind of like keeping this together. That's your suggestion, Nick. Thank you. Um, I'm going to keep that all together as one big term, one big constant. So the binomials are going to be x plus 2, excuse me, x, how about x minus 2? How long did we get that tool from? That was way back at the beginning. x minus 2 is a factor, corresponds to x equal 2 as a oh. root. Okay? So I'm just putting it back in our factored form. If I move these to the other side, I get x minus negative 1 plus i times the square root of 3, and x minus negative 1 minus i times the square root of 3. So my linear factors are going to be all of these terms plus two more that I've left undone for you. Oh, that's right. You simplified it for us. Okay. Yeah, I've, like, that wasn't that I've done like, uh, I don't know, 80% of the work on this one. So the last thing that you have to do is you have to run the quadratic formula into this one and come up with the last two roots and those two factors. So during the exam, we have to go through all of these steps? Uh, don't worry, I'll only put like seven or eight of these on the exam. <laughs> all right, LOL. All right, <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. You know, I'll be much more merciful on the exam. I don't think I'll put one quite this hard. Uh, you should be able to follow along with the steps that we did, I hope. If not, I hope you'd be ask, asking questions. But, yeah, I mean, all this stuff blends together. I can't ask you, like, every problem that I might like to. You'd never finish the test, and I'd never finish grading it. Neither of us would be happy. Um, but I am practicing the stuff that you need. Yes, question? So what are we trying to find? Ooh, uh, you're trying to find the complete linear factorization of this polynomial. So, so far we've got it as p of x equals x minus 2 times x plus 1 times x minus negative 1 plus i times the square root of 3 and then x minus negative 1 minus i times the square root of 3 times and there's going to be two more and those two more are going to come from solving this right here okay so great question thank you I might not have been as clear on that as I wanted to before your question so thank you All right, so like I said, most of this is done for you. You just got to find those last two. Moving on. <laughs> these are kind of cute. I like these. They're asking you to kind of work backwards in these things. So let's take a look at example F. Example F. And I'll take a second and just point out that this really reflects something on the, the, the rational roots, excuse me, on the complex zeros thing. This is on the handout. It's on the back side of one of your handouts. The root finder's toolbox. It's the imaginary zeros theorem right here. Let's see. Draw here. No, draw that. Come on there and let's see can I get this done yeah no that's the end zero stairs yeah zero theorem. sorry um, this one the imaginary zero theorem right here basically if you've got a polynomial with real coefficients and has one complex root then there's automatically another one so if you have a plus bi as a root, then a minus bi is also a root. Let's just look back at what we've seen so far. I mean, just a minute ago, we had one 
where we had negative 1 plus i times the square root of 3, that was a root. And then we had another one, negative 1 minus i times the square root of 3. In other words, just changing the sign on this term. So if you get one, then you get another one. So example f, for instance, tells you a little bit more than they need to, in my humble opinion. I might not be so generous. So it says q has degree 3. So q of x is a degree 3 polynomial. Are we doing example b? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, example f. Yeah, my bad. Um, Q of X has degree 3 and zeros at 3 and 2i. Uh, are we done with example B? Yes. Okay. What did we get on that? Because I just couldn't fill in that. We didn't finish it because this is going to be one of your homework problems, and oh. you need to finish this part, right? Uh, and that, that, part, that part comes from the factorization of these, of this. Yeah, I thought we were doing that. No, no, we'll move, we'll move on to the next one. Okay. So, as degree three, it has roots at x equal three and x equal two i. Now, in my mind, if this is a real polynomial, that is a polynomial with real coefficients, this is enough because if it has this as a root x equal 2i or 0 plus 2i then automatically it has 0 minus 2i as a root. Now they actually tell you that it has all three of these roots and that's fine all right they gave you a little bit more than they had to but they're going to ask you to reverse engineer this one and come up with a polynomial that has these three roots. So let's take a look here. We've got the root, x equal 3, x equal 2i, x equal negative 2i. What's the binomial going to be that corresponds to these? Well, let's start with the first one. The binomial is going to be x minus 3, x minus, three, x minus 2i, and x plus 2i. Beautiful. Now if I want to find q of x, I need to multiply all this stuff together. x minus 3 times x minus 2i times x plus 2i, like that. Let me give you a suggestion. Um, I would definitely follow it. Start by multiplying these two together. Just leave the x minus 3 out in front. Multiply the complex conjugates together. That's going to be x squared. This is back to FOIL stuff, right? Nothing dramatic here. Plus 2xi minus 2xi. And you got to be careful with the last one. Negative times a positive is negative. 2 times 2 is 4. i times i is i squared. Mm. i squared is negative 1. Brilliant. Excellent. We're going to use that. So this is going to become x minus 3 and x squared. Now something beautiful happens here. Does anyone see it? Beautiful. Well done. Minus 2xi and plus 2xi cancel, and even just as almost as good, negative 4 times negative 1 becomes plus 4. i squared disappears. So wow, all of a sudden we got rid of all our complex number stuff. No more i's. And then the last thing to do is just to foil this out. So it's going to be x cubed. I'm going, to, I'm going to kind of reverse the order here a little bit. Minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 12. Perfect. There's your polynomial.
All right. There's another one kind of like that one. And let's see. It's this one where you've got these two roots. Now, fortunately, they're only asking for a degree two polynomial, which means we only have to multiply two things together. But let me give you a little heads up first or a little reminder. So this is example G. And that reminder is this. Reminder. If I multiply a minus b times a plus b, you can FOIL this out and check me later. You'll end up with a squared minus b squared. That's that's the reminder. That's our little trick that we're going to use. And it's going to save you a lot of work if you use it. That was what we just did in the last problem, right? Kind of. It's a little bit. It's, it's close to that, yeah. Yeah. It, it actually, it's very close. Now that I think about it, it's more. So we want a polynomial with roots at x equal 1 plus i times the square root of 2 and x equal 1 minus i times the square root of 2. Notice again that if your polynomial has real coefficients, then these kind of roots happen in those conjugate pairs. One's a positive, one's a negative. That's okay. We don't have to worry about that completely right now. Um, here's our root. Let's take a look at the binomial. If I move this to the other side, it's going to be x minus 1 minus i times the square root of 2. And test yourself on this one. See if you can't move this to the other side. Pause the video if you have to. Go ahead, x. Perfect. Now we got to multiply these two together. This one. And you know what? I'll do it in blue here. This one and this one. Okay, let's see how that's going to work for us. Now, the first one gives me x minus 1 minus i times the square root of 2. And then the second one is x minus 1 plus i times the square root of 2. Here's what I'm going to do. I want to use this little trick up here. And to do that, um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to notice that, you know what? This term is the same for both of these. I guess I shouldn't have put it in the top one. My bad. Uh, yeah, this is getting worse. X, X. Now, why did why did I do that? I just put parentheses around this because now it's in the form of a minus b times a plus b. I'm regarding that as one whole term. So when I, when I multiply that, I'm going to get x minus 1 squared minus i times the square root of 2 squared. Now, your alternative, if you didn't do that, if you did it up here, you'd have to do x times all of these, then negative 1 times all of these, then negative i times the square root of 2 times all of these, that's nine multiplications. Then you got to do all the addition and cleaning up. Yeah, you do it that way if you want to. I'm going to do it my way. You know, you're free to do it my way as well. This, you can square that out as x squared minus 2x plus 1. I hope that no one here puts x squared plus 1 
It'll make me really, really happy if no one puts x squared plus 1 there. That'd be great. This, i squared is negative 1. Square root of 2 squared is 2. So what I end up with is x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus negative 2 becomes plus 2. Or in other words, x squared minus 2x plus 3. I probably maybe should have simplified that a little bit differently. Um, so, square root of 2 squared is 2. i squared is negative 1. So I'll just write that as negative 2. And then de double negative becomes a positive. There you go. A lot, lot cleaner that way. Whew. Looking good. Looking good. Comments or thoughts on that one? All right. Um, yeah. Oh, I, I yeah. did have one comment. Go um, ahead. When you uh, did the roots in the binomials, I am getting my um, plus or minus is x out. So when you do, when you go from the roots, like for example, x equals 1 plus i mm -hmm. times square root of 2, why does that change to x minus 1 minus? Good. Okay. You're moving this to the other side. When it changes sides, it's going to change signs. So. If I got a plus one here to move it to the left hand side, I got to subtract one. So let me show you. Um, if I wanted to get rid of the one from the left hand side, the way I would do that is I'd subtract one. And so that would give me x minus one equals i times the square root of two. And I'm like, oh, well, I need to get rid of this too. So I mean, I have to subtract this again. And that would give me x minus one minus i times the square root of two equals zero. It helps to imagine going, uh, switching it to x's side rather than whatever I was doing. Okay. okay. And then likewise over here with this one, here you're going to be adding i times the square root of 2 mm -hmm. to both sides so that we can get rid of it from the right hand side. Okay? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. I think we did a good job on that one. So good luck on that, and let's take a break.